Welcome everyone to uh, the Addiction Recovery Channel or ARC. I'm Ed Baker and I'm your host producer. I'm very pleased to be with you uh, here this morning. I'm especially indebted to uh, CCTV for accommodating uh, this manner of uh, producing the show. We're doing our first uh, show by Zoom. I'm sure we're not alone uh, in growing accustomed to Zoom. Zoom has uh, become everybody's friend uh, during this uh, most profound uh, coronavirus. Today, we're fortunate uh, to have Gary DeCarolis, who is the executive director at the Chittenden County uh, Turning Point as our guest. Thank you so much, Gary, for being with us here this morning. Glad to be here, Ed, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and I know that you don't have uh, a lot of time and your time is well spent, so I'm, I'm particularly indebted uh, to you. Um, you know, needless to say, I mean, we're all under a lot of stress because of COVID-19. Uh, we're all trying to adapt and do our best to um, stay in and stay safe and protect the very vulnerable. I want to recognize that. I know you're doing that, Gary, and I'm doing that too. I want to recognize that. I want to start by um, setting a little bit of a context for, for Vermont very, very briefly. Uh, as of yesterday, April 8th, uh, the health department was uh, reporting a total of 23 uh, fatalities in Vermont due to COVID-19. That was the same number that had been recorded on um, uh, the day before on April 7th. So there was no no increase in fatalities and that's that's good, but one death is is too many. We all know that. Um, mm -hmm. The other, the other uh, interesting uh, fact that bears upon our show today, our interview today, is that the 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 bulk, the majority of fatalities is in Chittenden County. Chittenden County, of course, is where the Chittenden County uh, Turning Point Center is. So we're one of the most effective uh, affected counties. And um, Gary, I wanted you to just maybe begin with that. I know that, you know, providing services to people with substance use disorder is your heart. And the last thing that you want to do was to close down, um, you know, access to the center itself. Can you talk a little bit about that, how that was for you, and what what exactly went into that decision? Sure, I'd be glad to, Ed. I think um, as we entered this whole coronavirus uh, pandemic here in Vermont, the first thing that was on my mind was, can I assure that my staff, who are all in recovery themselves, yeah. are going to be safe if they come into the center? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that was, if we this as you, I could guarantee that my staff. Would be, in fact, I think how we operate here, which is a large kind of a great room where people gather. Yeah. Um, just the opposite. I thought that I would be putting staff and other guests in jeopardy by remaining open. Yeah. Yeah. And I, for those of the viewers who have certainly the governor's been very good about laying some. Yeah, laying some clear guidelines about all this as well. So, so we had to close the center in terms of physical contact, but we are very much open in terms of uh, social contact through, through meetings like this, phone, Zoom meeting, and, and we're doing that seven day a week. Ed. We're, we're not uh, we're not closed for business. We're just closed for being socially connected physically connected we're socially connected we're not physically connected yeah and that that doesn't surprise me at, at all gary that you would make the hard decision for the common good and then do as much as is humanly possible to continue uh to deliver what what are what are really needed uh, vital services to people with with substance use disorder and i guess none Absolutely. of us are really immune from these hard decisions i mean we have uh a uh, close family, uh, you know, a grandchild and 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 um, and our, our children who live right by five blocks away, and we're uh, social distancing mm -hmm. uh, from them. We're, we're not we're not we're not getting together because mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to risk uh, transmitting the disease. Uh, we we all know now that people can be a asymptomatic and be infected with COVID nineteen, and um, certainly right. the recovery center is a place. Um, you know, that supports intimacy and interaction and closeness. And it must have been a, a really difficult decision to, um, 
to to uh, to protect the common good. Yeah. Yes. We were the first of the 12 centers to close, but it wasn't soon after that the other 11 um, also did the same thing. <clears throat> um, you know, and I was on a meeting yesterday, another Zoom meeting, and someone said, you know, we're, we talk a lot about social isolation during this time, mm -hmm. but we're really talking about physical isolation, mm -hmm. <clears throat> not necessarily social isolation because of platforms like this where we can stay connected actually see each other, hear each other. Um, and I, I like that reframing of this. It's uh, physical isolation versus social isolation. And as you know, Ed, um, one of the biggest enemies of recovery is isolation. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it is very important that we do stay connected during this time. Yeah. You know, I have a lot of associates that are in recovery and also attending Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, I don't know too much about other 12-step programs and how they're handling this, but Alcoholics Anonymous has done an exceptional job of setting up Zoom platforms. There's meetings all day long. People are going to meetings. People from Vermont are all of a sudden going to meetings in Louisiana and, you know, Arkansas yeah. and New Jersey and meeting new people <laughs> and having new friendships. So there's this, there's a little silver uh, lining uh, in that. Yeah. People are, are staying connected. People with technology anyway. People who have exactly. technology to do that. It's something exactly. to stay. Yes, absolutely. We have a, a recovery community yoga program here. Mm. Uh, we yoga class probably times a week. And <clears throat> one of the interesting things is the they've gone to a Zoom platform as well. Nice. And they're having people come who physically weren't able to come in the past join yeah. these Zoom yoga classes. Yeah. And then people from all over the state are joining in as well. So the numbers are actually bigger than they ever were when we could just offer physical connection. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful, Gary. You know, so I wanted to, um, I wanted to accentuate something that, <clears throat> that you and I know and people familiar with people with substance use disorder know that this is a, a very vulnerable uh, population without COVID-19. But 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 uh, the the population with substance use disorder is actually more vulnerable to um, serious uh, symptomatology and fatality uh, resulting from COVID nineteen. Uh, people who COVID nineteen uh, attacks the respiratory system. The coronavirus attacks the respiratory system. People who smoke uh, cigarettes are more at risk. People who vape uh, THC, people who vape nicotine have diminished lung capacity. They are more at risk. Uh, people with uh, opioid use disorder, opioid um, use will depress uh, respiratory function. So people with opioid use disorder who contract COVID-19 are also at more risk uh, for fatality. Uh, methamphetamine constricts uh, blood vessels, which can lead to pulmonary uh, complications. So people who use methamphetamine are more at risk for fatality if they um, contract COVID-19. You and I know that not all people with substance use disorder uh, lack access to health care, but by far the great majority of the people you come into contact with at the recovery center um, have inadequate access to health care, which is another complicating factor. Housing. Um, there's so many other variables that affect the population that, that you are dealing with. So I'd like you to, um, to you know, with, with that in mind, how are you continuing to do your best and have your staff do their best to maintain support for this population? What are you doing, Gary? <clears throat> Okay. Well, and by the way, Ed, you, you, what you just said is very, very true. Um, unfortunately, um, many of our guests that come through our door in recovery um, are still smoking and cigarettes, and they, their lung capacity is compromised during this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. What we're trying to do here is to pivot as quickly as possible so that we could keep connections and even extend 
find ourselves to connect with people that we have worked with in the past. Um, I'll give you an example. We have um, a recovery coaches up at the emergency department. <clears throat> They've gone from actually physically being in the emergency department to being available by phone. If a doc is seeing a patient that has a, uh, uh, an addiction and came into the emergency department for something related to their addiction. And so we're doing that. But more so, what we're also doing is we have seen over 600 people in the last year and a half um, up at the hospital. We're connecting with all those people to see if they want some support during this time. Whoa. Okay. And um, so, so all back the... Over, back over your records and reaching out to them? Exactly. Beautiful. And, um, and then if they do want continued support or renewed support during this time, our peer support specialists are here. They're going to give me the name and contact information. And then one of our peer support specialists mm -hmm. will put them on a, a rolling contact with them Beautiful. as long as they want. Beautiful. Um, and then um, also our recovery coaches are reaching out to all their folks that they've been working with to make sure that they know they're available for meetings through Zoom or phone calls. Um, and then we have seven day coverage um, by phone here um, in the center. Uh, someone can call 802-861 three one five zero and someone will answer whether it's or against another person and make sure we get to where they want to so we're trying to pick up as many pieces as possible to make sure that we're connecting to as many people as possible and do you find that um is that being utilized are people calling in are people calling that number are people utilizing your staff for support you know they are they are Ed, but not as much as I'd like to see, to be honest with you. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that would come into our center that I don't know what's going on for them right now. And it, it's a great concern for me. Yeah. But I'm hoping as we keep moving out and letting the public know that we're available, open phone calls, that will continue to spread out and reach more people. And I, I imagine when um, uh, what we're calling um, social... What, what did you what did you call it? The, so rather than social isolation is what's used a lot today. What we're saying it's physical isolation, okay. and we want to keep connecting with people in a social way, other than physically. So I imagine when when physical the, when the need for physical isolation is gone, you know, which we don't know when that's going to be, but when we're allowed to right. congregate again, that you'll have some uh, aggressive. Um, programs in place to reach out to the communities and popularize that the recovery center is open again. I, I'll help you with that. If you'd like, we can do a show on yep. the reopening of the recovery center and get that message out there to as many people as possible. Oh, that would be wonderful. I'd appreciate that very much, Ed. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, because I mean, I know how deeply you care about this population and I do too. And you know, the good thing, the wonderful thing that I know you, you've seen over your years uh, working very, very closely with this population is they, they, they look out for each other. Mm. So, you know, we have to kind of take some solace in that, that they're doing their best to look out uh, for each other out there. Um, you know, I want to thank you for everything uh, that, that you're, that you're doing. You know, now I think that, that this show here, um, I would like, I would like, uh, this will be shared, I hope, widely, and maybe it'll get out to people actually in recovery or in early recovery. So I know that you had some specific things that, that, that people can do, you know, like sort of, you had mentioned creating a uh, routine, reaching out to others at all costs. What, what do you, we'll go, let's go over some of those. What's the importance of creating yeah. a routine? <clears throat> well, this is, during this time, as I, we talked about earlier, this is no, so we have, to, we have to have physical isolation to protect ourselves from this virus. That's a given. Mm -hmm. But um, we need connection. And, you know, um, the, the enemy of recovery is isolation. So what do we do? And there's some people who might be uh, less, 
uh, aggressive in seeking out that connection. And I encourage them to push themselves to call somebody. Yeah. If it's calling us, terrific. If it's calling a friend or family member yeah. or even someone you haven't been in touch with for a long time, yeah. reach out. And you're not only helping yourself, but you're also giving the other person an opportunity yeah. to do something to help a fellow human being. Yeah. And so I, I encourage people to do that at all costs. And and really, um, I know it, for those that have social anxiety, this might be difficult, but it is incumbent on you to, to do that. Second of all, I think physical activity during this time is very important. Yeah. You know, my wife and I take a walk. You, yeah. uh, Ed, and, and Ellen take a walk every yeah. day. Yeah. That's just to keep the body going, keep yeah. all the, the parts from the brain to the toes yeah. Yeah. active. Yeah. Yeah. And so I encourage safe walking. Um, wear a mask um, if yeah. you're going to be around other people. And don't they say, yep. isn't there, there's a saying, uh, move a muscle, change a thought. So... You know, if, if you happen to be in early recovery and you're having a hard time, if you're a little bit depressed, move a muscle, go for a exactly. walk, you know, exactly. do something, change that thought around, do something positive. It's the difference between being active and being inactive is really important. Absolutely. And if, you know, if you don't want to go out of the house, put some music on and do some wild dancing in the house. Right. No one's got to see it, but it'll get that body moving. <laughs> see how many push-ups you can do. It might be embarrassing, but see how many push-ups you can do. <laughs> I like this one, Gary. I really like this one a lot. Explore getting to know yourself like never before. You had said that. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, it is a time for reflection. I mean, we're probably spending more time by ourselves now than we probably have in years, if not yeah. ever. Yeah. And so sometimes... Um, you know, writing can be a very helpful way to get some of that out about who am I and what am I, what am I all about? What do I want to do in life? The other thing I know for having been in career for years, a lot of things that I loved to do when I was younger, that my work over the years, it washed them away. I had forgotten about them. And so during this time, it's been helpful for me and I think helpful for other people to think back, what are those things that I really, really enjoyed doing? And those things back, um, get, you know, um, those, are the, those are the things that help renew or charge the battery, so to speak. And so it'll, um, and we need those things right now. Um, we do, we do. More so I encourage people to do that work. So we do, we need those things more so than ever before. So create routine, try to create routine. Reach out, yep. reach out, even when it's difficult, even when you may, may yes. not be used to reaching out, because by reaching out, you can help someone. And by reaching out, a person, a person can reach out just to make contact, or a person can reach out for help. When, when, when someone reaches out to me for help, and I can actually help them, that is incredibly rewarding for me. It's not a cost, exactly. thing, it's a benefit to me. So people out there who need help, Reach out for help. Don't be ashamed to reach out exactly. for help. Do that. Because, you know, the other side of that is someone's going to reach out to you for help, too. And so it's, it's a 50-50 deal here. And we're all part of the same community. And, and we just got to keep, in a sense, creating community by that reaching out. Yeah. Good, good point, Gary. You know, the other thing that's going on that, that I'm aware of is there are, there are a few confidential uh, uh, recovery sites on um, Facebook, and they are very, very active now. There's more and more people connecting on Facebook in a confidential, you know, AA site or NA site where you're not breaking anonymity to talk to people about your recovery or AA because it's a special AA site. So I would urge those out there who haven't yet found those to seek uh, some of those sites and, and get invited yeah. to join some of those sites. There are more and more, there yeah, are totally. very many ways of, of uh, supporting each other that we're creating. All right, I know that... Um, I know you're very uh, busy, uh, Gary. Uh, I want to tell you that I, I'm hoping that next week or my next show, I think I'm going to have uh, Grace Keller on uh, from uh, Good. Uh, Safe Recovery and talk about the people with uh, engaged in harm reduction uh, support services. 
So I, I just can't tell you how much that I appreciate what you do, your leadership, uh, your, your unwavering uh, dedication, even, you know, in the face of the coronavirus, you're out there doing the best you can. I want to commend you for that. I want to thank you for that. And I want to just give you this last uh, thank you, Ed. 30 seconds or however long you want to take to just give a, you know, say your message, whatever message you have for the viewing audience, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up the show. Okay, well, thank you, Ed, and thanks for your kind words. You're, it takes one to know one, my friend. Um, so what I would say for folks, uh, beyond what Ed and I have already talked about, is go to our website at www.turningpointcentervt.org. And in, on that website, at the homepage right now, you'll see a button that says uh, resources available uh, during this coronavirus time. And those, you'll see in there uh, meetings and activities that we've got going, but you also see a button. If you want to have a recovery coach, just hit that button, give us the contact information, and we'll get it to our recovery coach supervisor and hook you up with a recovery coach almost instantly. And I, so we're here for you, and please take advantage of that. Don't be shy. Um, you, no apologies. It's uh, we're all in this together, and I want to come out of this all together as well. I don't want to lose one person if we can avoid that. And so, um, thank you for the opportunity, Ed, for being on your show. And I wish you and Ellen the best. Thank you, thank you, Gary. Same to you and Barbara. And for the viewing audience, there'll be a slide that'll be lingering now. Uh, so get uh, a piece of paper and a pencil. You can write down that website. You can write down that phone number. And uh, you're not alone. As long as Gary DeCarolis is in town, you're not alone. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Ed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.